wanted to give you a walkthrough of the Chapter 5 Excel uh, homework that we have this week. Um, for a few of the classes I got to mention this, for the afternoon class I did not, so I'm going to make you this video. So this is the uh, spreadsheet that um, I like you to do because it really helps with understanding the absorption costing and the variable costing and the differences and how to reconcile that. So I'm going to go ahead and just open this spreadsheet. And the first thing I'm going to do is enable the editing. Now you can see that there are some uh, pieces of information given to you right here. So it tells us what the selling price is, direct material, direct labor, variable manufacturing overhead. Then here's the fixed manufacturing overhead. So there's some selling and administrative also, both variable and fixed. So now, oh, and then it tells us how much we have in beginning inventory. Apparently this is a new company because we have nothing in inventory. We produced. 10,000 and sold 8,000 uh, in the first year, which means we had how much in ending inventory? Yep, 2,000. So the next year, check this out, we produced 6,000 but sold 8,000, which means obviously that we had to take the 2,000 that was left over from year one and go ahead and sell it in year two. Okay, so now to get the points on this most Fully, you'll want to do cell referencing. So, for example, the units produced during the first year we can see over here is 10,000. But instead of you typing in 10,000, it's way more fun to hit the plus or the equals and come up here and then hit return, and that puts that 10,000 in the cell for you. And I'm going to do the same thing for the units sold. So, again, you can hit the plus or the equal sign, either one works. Come up here, grab it, and say that that's what I want in that cell. Units in inventory, that's easy. It's whatever you produced, less what you sold, and there's your field for that. Okay, so units in beginning inventory for the second year are the ending inventory for the last year, otherwise known as $2,000. How many did I produce in the second year? 6,000. How many did I sell in the second year? 8,000. Units in ending inventory, I would take my, be oops, my beginning inventory, plus what I produced, minus what I sold, and it should be zero. Very good, okay, so that's the first step. So then what we have to do is compute the unit cost using absorption costing. So you and I both know that that means that we have direct materials, and we have direct labor, and we have variable manufacturing overhead, and then the fixed manufacturing overhead, now we've gotta take what the fixed cost is and divide that by which one? Units produced or units sold? Yep, we gotta do it by the units produced. So that'll give us $12 and then we're gonna add all that up just like so. Okay, so that's our first one. Then for the second year, again, it's going to be <coughs> uh, oops, direct materials plus direct labor plus variable manufacturing overhead, plus the fixed labor divided by how many units we produced in the six, in the second year, which is this, and it's gonna cost us 40. Oh, but I put that in the wrong thing. So that actually should be down here. So really what I should have done <laughs> is not shortchanged it, but gone like this, and like this, and like this, and then I would have taken my 120 and divided it by how many I produced. There we go. And then this would be an add. Okay, there you go. But either way, it comes up the same amount. All right, so now we've got to construct the absorption costing income statement. All right, so our income statement is going to be our sales. Well, how many did we sell? It tells us right over here. We sold 8,000. What was the sales price? $50, that's pretty easy. What's our cost of goods sold? Well, under the absorption costing, we're gonna use this $32 that we calculated, again, times what we sold, which was this 8,000 over here. Okay, so we don't, once we use the units produced to come up with the per unit, we no longer need to use that because now when we're coming up with the cost of goods sold, it's that word sold that's really key, right? That's where we're going to use the 8,000 down here. Really important to differentiate that. Okay, gross margin is simply the difference between the two. We now know that. What are our selling and administrative expenses? Well, because these this is absorption costing, we're going to take the fixed expenses, and then we're going to add <coughs> 
the variable expenses per unit times how many we sold. Oops, I'm going to do this in the right order. So I've got to take my fixed, which are here, and then I'm going to add that to the multiplication of this times this. There we go. 102. Okay, so then my net operating income is simply my gross margin less what my net operating income is. All right, so far so good. So now sales in year two, same kind of deal. We're going to, how many did we sell in the second year? We sold 8,000. What's my sales price? My sales price is $50. Okay, now here it gets just a teeny bit tricky. All right, so what is the cost of goods sold? Do you remember those 2,000 units that were left over from last year? Those 2,000 units are actually priced at $32 a unit, right? So we would need to take 2,000 times the 32. Now I'm not gonna make that a calculation, I just wanted to show you that when we come up with the cost of goods sold, that is what needs to be in there, all right? When you do the second year, how many were produced, then you'd have that 6,000. What was the unit price in the second year? And that was $40, all right? So that's how we need to come up with our cost of goods sold. Okay, and so what the instructions tell you in Connect, if I could go back here, right? It tells you that for the C, uh, excuse me, for the cell C41, it says the formula in the shell, cell should say something like this. So I'm going to try to unpack that for you just a little bit because I did put that particular if statement in my um, cell and it basically says if C, it says if C26, which is the units in ending inventory, are less than C27, meaning the 8,000, right? Then what I need to do is take the C26 and multiply it times C36, which is the cost, which is exactly what I just told you. We had to take that 2,000 times that 32. It's just putting an if statement in there so it knows whether we need to um, subtract or divide. And I apologize, I misspoke. What it was is if the units sold were greater than the units produced, okay? So that's what that's basically saying, which it is, because now we've got to go and, and get that beginning inventory out, which is what we're doing here. So we're taking C26 times C36, which is the price under year one, and then we're also going to multiply B36, where's B36, <coughs> and then, oh, I guess we already did that. So, and then we take the C27, C27, times the C36, which is the price, okay? So it's basically saying, in a nutshell here, if units sold are greater than units produced, we need to take that beginning inventory t and multiply that beginning inventory times the unit price in year one, then add that to the units produced times the unit uh, uh, product cost in year two. And that's what this does, okay? So there you have it. And then the gross margin is the same. I mean, I somehow screwed something up over here. Let's see. I've got to take, that just doesn't look right. I've got to take my sales times how much stuff did I sell? 8,000. There you go. Okay. So now I take the sales for the second year minus the cost of goods sold. And there you have it. Then my selling and administrative is going to be, well, what is it? It's always going to be 70,000 plus the combination of how many did I sell? 8,000 and you multiply that times the per unit which is the four and we come up with that. All right, so then I'm gonna take my gross margin less my sales and administrative and come up with a minus $56. Okay, so the second part of it is going to be doing the variable costing which um, I think is just a little bit easier but here it's asking you for the unit product cost, so that would be the same. I'm gonna hide my absorption costing for just a second so that you can see that my direct materials are here and my direct labor and my variable manufacturing overhead. 
So that is my unit product cost. Now remember in class yesterday that that is not the total product cost. So we're going to take that $20, but to make the entire variable cost, here's where we add in the variable selling and administrative, which was that $4 times however many we sold, which was here. Okay. So, oopsie, and I did something wrong, of course. So here's my <laughs> unit sold times that. Okay, I just put in the amount. All right, I hope that makes sense to you. So there is my variable selling and administrative. And then I can just total that over here, which would be the 32,000 plus the 160. I'm gonna stick that sales in there. That's the $50 times how many I sold. All right, and then my contribution margin, which is different than under absorption costing because here the contribution margin is simply my sales less any and all of my variable costs. So now I'm gonna take my fixed manufacturing overhead, which was 120, oops, 120, and then I'm gonna take my fixed selling and administrative, which was 70. I'll add those two things together, and that's 190, so then I'm gonna come up with my contribution margin less all of my fixed expenses, and that is my uh, net operating income for year two. And then you can do the same for the second year. So I hope that helps you. But the, the cool thing is that um, if you come back over here and it says check your worksheet by changing the units sold in the data to 6,000 for year two. And then it says the cost of goods sold under absorption costing should now be 24,000. So all it wants you to do is see how cool it is when you just change numbers. So I'm gonna show you how to and now the directions ask us to change it so that the units sold instead of being 8,000 for the second year are going to be 6,000, which basically means that the amount of uh, units that I produce are the amount of units that I sold. So now instead of being $304,000, the cost of goods sold is now $240,000. In essence, what is happening is it's taking the 6,000 units that were sold and costing them out at the $40 um, price range so it's not using the materials from year one all right and now you can also see that the net operating income of minus 34,000 is the same whether you're using absorption costing or whether you're using variable costing and that is because the amount of units that we produced is the same amount that we sold which means that there was no leftover fixed manufacturing overhead expense under the absorption, which is what normally happens and what we've been learning when the um, when there is ending inventory left over, because that's usually where that cost goes, is that extra piece of fixed manufacturing overhead is stored in the ending inventory until it's sold. So that's why they wanted you to do this. So I hope that makes sense. And if you start to understand this, then this will really, really help you in the future. Hope you enjoyed this.